Hey, welcome to the show. Uh, this will be a short one, I think. Uh, this will try to anyway. Um, one of the things I wanted to kind of express here is Schumer says Congress should deal with debt ceiling this year. Uh, first of all, I, I think I said uh, earlier in the midterms that if the Democrats are going to win, any part of the government is going to be like by, by the hair of their by, by the by the skin of their teeth. And so far, it's been exactly that as far as the uh, Senate goes. Now, Schumer says he wants to raise the debt de ceiling. The problem is he still has uh, he still has um, uh, mansion and cinema to deal with. Now, those two are going well. Maybe not so much mansion. Be, maybe mansion because I think his uh, his deal that he that he did with uh, Schumer to to uh, do the. Uh, the IRA, as you uh, the uh, the inflation no, is inflation uh, inflation uh, reduction reduction act a few months ago. Um, I can't remember if if, uh, if Mansion's uh, natural gas pipeline was uh, defeated or if they uh, if they had agreed to go with it for his vote. But if not, that means that I can see Mansion being ass and it's like. Well, you know what? Looking at the fact that if what Biden truly if Biden uh knew that come debt ceiling, they would need Manchin's vote for uh the artificial uh limitations on spending, uh like with uh the debt ceiling we have currently, uh which was in place because Obama wanted to lick uh, Republican boots and all of this stuff. But anyway. Um, I can see uh, Biden uh, telling Schumer to uh, forget about uh, putting more um, emphasis on climate change uh, reduction um, and allowing for less of the uh, coal mines in uh, West Virginia to be shut down. Instead, uh, allowing them to continue on and pay whatever that they they request to pay for Manchin's vote. So I can see that happening. Uh, C2, um, I kind of figured that they would have to do it this year because otherwise, since the Republicans are pretty much uh, shooing to, uh, to win the House, um, there's going to be some bipartisanship going on there either way. Uh, second of all, let's see. Now, where is this at? I saw a uh, on a different note. Um, I saw uh that well, first of all, McConnell won the uh, leadership role again and beat Scott or what's the name? Um, let's see, oh, it's Sanders Scott. I'll just say that. Um. Yeah, it just tells you they didn't have to learn anything as far as like. Is it's kind of like uh, I'm pretty sure that they're going to reelect Pelosi as some sort of a, a top position in the House, even though she pretty much allowed the, the Republicans to win enough uh, House seats to take over. So I'm hoping that she either retires at the end of the and at the end of this uh, term that she's in that she just got re, re freaking elected. Um. And I'm hoping that new leadership, once they do take out, t take back the house at some point, uh, that new leadership is put in. <sighs> so for everybody who uh, wants uh, new leadership and new this, new that, you have to make sure that every state in the union has a third party at ballot access. You have to make sure that there are ranked choice paper ballots available to all, including mail-in ballots. Now, in my case, this year, I kind of got cheated out, even though I may or may not have voted. As far as like, if I had if I had the choice, um, I've seen I I've, I've said this multiple times uh, on here as well as online overall. Uh, I live in a democratic. Uh, democratic controlled state, oh, not state, but a uh, city, Columbus, Ohio. The mayor is Democrat. 
the vast majority of the council, city council, is Democrat. Um, so if the Democrats uh, are messing with votes, that means both parties mess with votes. Because I also know that there are uh, some uh, weirdness going on as far as as far as Republican states, as far as Democratic votes there. So both parties want to consolidate their own power and make sure they keep that power. So people need to get back on the street. Forget about it being backed by Democrats or Republicans. If you want real change, you actually have to go out there and show it. Uh, not just, you know, because it pertains to, rightfully so, but pertains to uh, uh, human humans being killed. Uh, whether it be black, indigenous, uh, Asian, whatever. Nothing but respect for those organizations that do get the word out and do get uh, acknowledgement of that. Uh, but overall, until we change the system the way it is now, that stuff is not going to change. We're still going to get the same old, same old. Uh, I've expressed my opinion on the so-called left uh, uh, political parties. While I do have respect for some of their policies, I don't have the respect to the fact that they then use membership, at least in my opinion, um, use memberships as a as a business model. Because that's what I feel like they do. Because when Democrats win, almost nothing happens as far as like you know protests and all those stuff. But when a Republican does anything all kinds of protests happen so either their leadership is being uh is being shunned and told not to do anything during a democratic uh leadership it doesn't matter what what city or what office but this all of this is meant to divide and meant to not get anything actually done so those who have common interest on both sides outside of office need to get together and do kind of like what the Crips and Bloods did back in the late nineties. And that's come together and realize, you know what? Both of our lives are getting fucked. Let's not allow this to happen anymore. Work together. Um, but in order to do that, there has to be some understanding on economics. MMT teaches what the economic system is. It doesn't teach what the what, what the schools of economic thought teach right now because that's the opposite of what MMT actually teaches. And basically, if you look at the history of MMT, MMT has been right 99.9% .9 of the time. And the only part they were wrong on was the housing. And that was because it happened, it, it happened in different parts that others weren't really paying attention. Um, otherwise, they've been right on everything. Anyway, so, um, yeah, that's my, I guess you see, radical rant as far as how far it goes. But anyway, uh, let's see, damn it. Um, and also, uh, somebody pointed this out to me. The partner, wait, hold on. Let's see. I'm trying to make this really short, if I could. Uh... And, uh, da, 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 da. Okay, okay. So this is the history of the uh, the uh, World Economic Forum. Uh, partnerships in shape in the shaping history for the first fifty years. The story of five decades of the World Economic Forum, as seen through the eyes of its members, leaders, and outside world. The forum is best known for the for its annual meeting in Davos. Clusters through the years, numerous business, government, and civil society leaders have made their way to the high Alps to consider the major global issues of the day and to brainstorm on solutions to address these changes. While many global institutions are notable for the breaths of the nations or the powerful political leaders attending their attending their attending their gatherings, gatherings, gatherings. The gatherings, there we go, the World Economic Forum annual meeting and indeed all the activities and initiatives of the forum around the world are distinguished by the active participation of government, business, and so social society figures. 
The forum engaged the most experienced and the most promising, all working together in a collaborative and uh, collegial spirit of Davos. Professor Klaus Schwab founded what was originally called the European Management Forum as a non-profit foundation based in uh, Geneva, Geneva, Switzerland. It drew business leaders from Europe and beyond to Davos for an annual meeting each each uh, January. Initial professor, initially Professor Schwab focused on the meeting on how European firms could catch up with the U.S. management practices. He also developed and promoted the stakeholder management approach, which based the corporate success on managers taking account for all interests, not merely shareholders, the clients and customers, but employees and the communities which uh, within which they operate, including government. Professor Schwab's vision for what would become the World Economic Forum grew steadily as a result of achieving milestones Events in 1973, namely the collapse of the Bretton Woods fixed exchange rate mechanism, and the Arab, uh, Arab, Arab, sorry, I pronounce it this way, Arab Israeli war, saw the annual meeting expand its fo- focus from management to economic and social issues. Sorry, uh, political leaders were invited for the first time to Davos in January 1974. Two years later, the organization introduced a system of memberships for the 1,000 leading uh, companies of the world. The European Management Forum was the first non-governmental institution to initiate a partnership with China's Economic Development Commission, or commissions, spurring, uh, spurring economic reform policies in China. Regional meetings around the globe were also added to the year, uh, year's activities while the publication of the Global uh, Competitiveness Report in 79 saw the organization expand to, its, to become a knowledge hub as well. In 1987, the European Management Forum became the World Economic Forum and sought to broaden its vision to include providing a platform for dialogue um, World Economic Forum meeting milestones during this time include the Davos Declaration signed signed in 1988 by Greece and Turkey, which saw them tur- which saw them turn back from the brink of war. While in 1989, North and South Korea held their first minister- uh, ministerial level meetings at Davos. At the same meeting, East Germany Prime Minister Hans Modrow uh, Modrow and German Chancellor Helmut Kohl met to discuss German reuni- reunification. In 92, South African President De Klerk, uh, Klerk met Nelson Mandela and Chief uh, Magsutu uh, uh, Buthelzi at the annual meeting, the first joint appearance outside South Africa and a milestone in the country's political transition. In 2015, the forum was formally recognized as the international organization. It is now on the next phase of journey as a global platform for public private incorporation. Uh, just somebody asked me if I should oh, wait a minute, let me see. Leadership and governance. Let's see what the heck this is about. Uh, let me see. World Economic Forum is the international organization for public private cooperation uh, cooperation. Uh, the uh, forum strategy model world-class corporate governance where values are as important as well as legitimacy, accountability, transparency. For, all this is BS, but whatever. Uh, da, da, da. Let's see. Klaus Schwab, founder and executive chairman. Uh, let's see, board of trustees. You have Lawrence D. Fink. I love his name, Lawrence D. Fink. Um, let's see. Of course, he's on. Of course, he's on the board of trustee. Al Gore, of course, he is. Christina, uh, Christine Lagarde, of course, she is. Let's see. Is there anybody I don't know that was on here? Uh, let's see. He, uh, uh, no, pretty much knew. I'm pretty much knew these people were a part of that. Kind of surprised I don't see Bill Gates on this, but anyway. Let's see. Brent President. Okay. Uh, managing Board. Let's see who's on this one. 
Uh, okay, so Julian, I don't know who these people are. Uh, it's interesting to look at them. Look at them. Look at them. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't know anybody you know, as far as the park goes, but some of you may, be, may know these people. Executive Fellows, Anthony Robert Hobley, Executive Fellow Strategist. Now, is me are one of these? These two look kind of familiar. Were they? I wonder if they had. Uh, they were involved in some um, U.S. government type stuff, as far as being involved in the uh, administrative role. Anyway, for some reason, anyway. Uh, so this is we're progressives uh, stuff. That's all kinds of cool. Let's see. Anyway, so the next thing I wanted to talk about was Target because I saw that they're they're blaming uh, thieves for their loss of revenue, uh, somewhat. And my first thought when I saw that was, well, let me see if I can find that story. Uh, is it? Eh, huh? Yeah. Okay. So, so you look into Target's debt. These people have actually, this company, this corporation had been losing tons of money. Uh, even when they were having sales upon sales, because they, they had stuff that they couldn't sell. So they were trying to get rid of it. But anyway, so see, over the past three months, shares of Target moved higher by 1.24% before we understood the importance of debt. Let us know, or let, let us look out. Look at, uh, at how much debt Target uh, has. Target's debt, based on Target's ba uh, balance sheet as as of September uh, 20, 2020, long-term debt is at $12.49 billion, and current debt is at $131 million, according to, uh, according, accounting to $12.62 billion in total debt, adjusted for $6 uh, billion in the cash equivalents. The company's net debt is at $6.62 billion. Let's define some of the terms we use in the, par uh, in the paragraph above. Current debt is the portion of the company's debt which is due within one year, while long-term debt is a portion due in more than a year. Cash equivalents include cash and any liquid securities with maturity periods of 90 days or less. Total debt equals current debt plus long-term debt minus cash equivalents. Now, I looked up, let me see if I can, nope, not that one, and not, not, not that one either, uh, nope, ah, yeah, I think this is what it is, let me see, uh, target organized, oh, this is organized retail crime drove astounding 400 million loss in profits this year. Target store are getting looted and is talking uh, taking a bit of a huge bite out of the profits. Now the, I'm trying to find out where I put that story because this, ah no that's not that's something else. This isn't possibly let me see. And now, man, you think I can get this straight? <laughs> And uh, nope. I mean, they have been slashing like prices all over the place anyway, so it's not surprising they would be uh, losing money either way. But I mean, if you look up what their security measures are, that's not it. Uh, then you'd be surprised that anybody's been like getting away with anything. Ah, there we go. I think it is. Stealing from Target. Target shoplifting policy in twenty twenty two. Now, retail loses millions of dollars into shoplifting. A single shoplifter can walk out of the store with $200 to $2,000 of product. Target is no different. Target's shopping, uh, shoplifting policy in 2022. Target has implemented a strictly or strict policy to prevent this issue at its stores. There's now several surveillance systems within security, uh, within security guards, fa facial recognition, and multiple deterrents to reduce the number of shoplifting incidents that occur each year. 
that those caught stealing would adhere with adhere to various levels of deterrent and a range of penalties that enforce disobedience among thieves. They they include some of the uh, the actions being written off, uh, written up, excuse me, fines or store bans. While more serious offenders will have police involvement, depending on how severe the crime is. How does the retail retailers know if the, if you steal their merchandise? A CCTV sh- uh, system. Well, if you have ever visited their locations, look for uh, towards the top of the head, uh, top of your head, and you'll you might notice some hemispherical shaped things with a little red light blinking on it. They are sophisticated CCTV systems that cover the in the interior of all store of all Target stores. The staff can monitor all the suspicious activities happening inside the store. They commonly save the footage as evidence and even share opportunity or important information with other locations of corporate headquarters via email. Facial recognition software. Their modern cameras use uh, facial recognition software and image ana- analytics to ensure that loss prevention and recovery are better handled after shoplifting incidences. It enables the security staff to keep a close eye on suspicious customers through perpetual video monitoring both in stores and throughout all public areas and in their parking lots. Sensors and RFID or sorry RFID tags. Sensors tags will be uh, will be present in nearly every physical object within the next uh, next few years as as means of making shopping more secure. Now, this means every few years. Uh, in few years, let's see. Uh, hell, this is from uh, from August of this year. Meaning that, despite the fact that they had lowered the prices, despite the fact that they have all this uh, all this surveillance and show that they still lost money. So that doesn't tell me that they have a shoplifting problem. It doesn't tell me that they have a sale problem or sales problem that means that tells me that someone is taking more out of the company than they should and they can't justify it anymore so when you ha- when when your company has more debt than it has in revenue and you don't and and even though you're selling or at least trying to sell everything that's you know at cost and you're still losing money. That means that you're uh, you are not a good business person. And that means whomever took over Target, if there if there's new management, I think is causing the downfall of Target. Uh, maybe it's one of those. It's a it was already a dead uh, corporation. They're just taking what they're just taking more out than they put in. Venture capitalist, I believe, is called. Uh, you you buy a you buy a uh, a property and you take as much out as you can until it goes bankrupt and you have to file chapter eleven on that. But because you if you if you if you file chapter eleven on that, you could negotiate down whatever debt you have. So that could be what's going on with, with Target now. Anyway, so let's see. That's pretty much what I wanted to say at this present moment. Um, I will pre- come back with another one. I have three meetings today, so I'll be pretty busy. So anyway, for the moment, thanks for watching. Uh, oops. Yeah, thanks for watching. I'll be back on momentarily, uh, hour or so, uh, to do another one. So peace out for the moment.